Section 8.6 is all about slope. So by the end of this lesson, I want you to be able to find the slope of a line, either given a graph or given two points, and then also be able to use the slope to describe a constant rate of change. So first let's look at the uh, definition for slope. The slope is the ratio of the rise, or the vertical change, to the run, or the horizontal change, of a line. Basically what it does is it describes the steepness of the line. And for a line, it's always constant, no matter which portion or part of the line you're on or you're focusing on. So when we talk about slope, you'll often hear me say it's rise over run. So the rise, remember, is the vertical change, or the y, think about the y-axis, how high up and down it's going, and the run is horizontal. So then that would be the x's, how far left and right are we moving. So slope is rise over run. There are four types of slope. The first two we're going to discuss are positive and negative. Notice that the red line is positive. It represents a rate of increase. As you move from the left to the right, you're going uphill. So we are increasing as we move from left to right. A negative slope represents a rate of decrease. So as you move from left to right across the graph, notice that this, the line is decreasing or you're going downhill. So that's a negative slope. And you'll have to remember that positive from left to right increases, negative from left to right decreases. Steeper slopes represent greater rates of change. So the steeper a slope is, the closer it is to being completely vertical or up and down, is a greater rate, rate of change. So then a less steep slope is going to represent a lesser rate of change or lesser rates of change. So let's look at some examples. Let's find the slope of the line. When you are given a graph and you're asked to find the slope of the line, one thing you can do is count rise over run. And slope is often indicated using the letter M. So you'll see me use M to describe slope. So remember it's rise over run. What's nice about a graph when you have the line is you can look at any two points. They can be side by side. They can be further apart. But because the slope of a line is constant, no matter where on the line you are, you will always get the same answer. We do want to make sure, however, that we are always reducing the slope. So we want it to be a fraction in simplest form. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start over here in this upper right-hand quadrant, quadrant 1, and I'm going to start down here, and I'm going to count how high am I going up and how high am I going over to get to the next point. So it's up, rise, over, run. So let me erase those lines so we can see the dots, but we go up 1, 2, 3. So my rise is positive 3, and I'm running to the right from here, 1, 2, 3, 4. So the slope is 3 over 4. Now to prove the point that you can use any two ordered pairs, let's look at two different ones. So let's erase these marks here. I want you now to look at two different ordered pairs. And I'm going to space mine a little further apart, but I'm going to come all the way down here to the bottom left, and I'm going to go to the origin. So I'm going to count up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So this slope would be 6 over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So 6 over 8. Notice this fraction is not reduced, but if I reduce the fraction, I also get 3 over 4. And remember, that's because slopes, the slope of a line is constant. So let's look at another example. Oh, I should also point out, this line has positive slope. So you need to remember, because it's increasing from left to right, or we're going uphill, the 3 fourths is going to be positive. 
example two, you can see three ordered pairs that are marked on the line. Again, you can use any ordered pair to help you find the slope, but again, it's rise over run. So I'm gonna start here at this ordered pair, two, negative two, and I'm gonna count up one, two, three, four. So it's four over, I'm going left, one, two, three, four, five, six. So it's four over six. Before I reduce though, I wanna make sure that I'm understanding that this line has negative slope. So I need to put a negative sign on my fraction because it's decreasing from left to right. We're going downhill, the slope is negative. Now I'm gonna reduce by dividing the top and the bottom by two and I get negative two over three. So the slope of this line is negative two over three. You would have found the same answer had you gone from this ordered pair to that one. You could have started down here and worked your way to the left. So either way you look at it, any way you look at it, you could have started down at the bottom and gone all the way to the point that's most left. You would have gotten also negative two over three. Pause the video here and try to find the slope of this line on your own. Taking into account, does this line have positive or negative slope? You should be able to look at this equation, or look at this graph, and tell me right away if it's positive or negative slope. So again, any ordered pairs will work. I'm going to start um, up here in the upper left, and I'm going to go to this ordered pair at negative 2, 4. So I'm going down 1, 2, 3, 4. And sometimes it helps to see that's 4. So the rise is 4. And the run from here is 1, 2. So I'm running 2, or 4 over 2. And again, I know that this line has negative slope. So it's negative 4 over 2. And I do need to reduce by dividing the top and the bottom by 2. Whoops. So I get negative 2 over 1. You can leave it like that, or you can write negative 2. It's your choice. Either are acceptable. But again, remember that this line does have negative slope. That's something you need to be able to pick out. Now let's talk about the slope formula. We just figured out or discovered how to find the slope given the graph, but what if we don't have the graph and we just have two ordered pairs or two points that the line passes through? So the slope, m, of a line passing through points at x1, y1, and x2, y2, remember the subscripts just distinguish that we're talking about two different ordered pairs. It's the ratio of the difference in y-coordinates, so we're gonna subtract the y-coordinates to the corresponding difference in x-coordinates. We're gonna subtract the x-coordinates. I know you've worked with slope formula before, so hopefully re you remember that slope equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So let's take a look at some examples. Let's find the slope of the line that passes through the two given points. So first I'm gonna write the formula up top. You've just written it in your notes, so you don't need to rewrite it but it's y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. We're gonna label the first point x1, y1. The second point is x2, y2. One thing you do need to be careful of are your negatives, making sure that we're subtracting correctly. So first I wanna take y2, which is negative one, minus y1, which is three. So on top I have negative one minus three. On the bottom, x2 minus x1. So four minus, be careful here, negative two. And I'm gonna use a parenthesis because it's minus a negative. Now we need to do the subtraction. So on top, negative one minus three is negative four. On the bottom, four minus a negative two, we wanna add the opposite. So four plus two becomes six. Now I reduce the fraction by dividing the top and the bottom by two, and I get negative two over three. So now we know a formula to help us find the slope when we're given two points 
and not the graph. It's a little bit easier than actually graphing the two points and counting rise over run. So you want to make sure you're familiar with this formula and able to use it. Example 5, we have negative 4, 3 and 1, 2. So again, I'm going to label x1, y1, x2, y2, simply because this is the first ordered pair, this is the second ordered pair. So my slope is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So we have 2 minus 3, just plugging in the numbers, over 1 minus, be careful of the symbols here, negative 4 x2 minus x1. So on top, 2 minus 3, that's negative 1. And on bottom, I add the opposite. 1 plus 4 is 5. So the slope of the line that passes through those two ordered pairs is a negative 1 fifth. Now let's compare it to the last answer. We have negative 1 fifth and we have negative 2 thirds. Which of those slopes would be steeper? Negative 2 thirds or negative one-fifth. So I'm asking, if we look at the last two examples, what's steeper, a negative two-thirds or a negative one-fifth? Remember, we talked about steeper slopes having greater rates of change. So since two-thirds is the larger fraction, this is the steeper slope. Two-thirds, or negative two-thirds, is a greater rate of change than negative one-fifth. Okay, so if you'd like to pause the video here, try to find the slope between the two points on your own using the slope formula, and then check your answer with me. So we have x1, y1, we have x2, y2. So using our slope formula, it's y2 minus y1, so 3 minus 5. Notice it's always the back minus the front on the ordered pairs over x2 minus x1, so that would be 8 minus 1. On top, 3 minus 5, that's a negative 2. On bottom, we have 8 minus 1, which is a positive 7. So our slope is negative 2 sevenths. This cannot be reduced. So it's your final answer. Hopefully you were able to get that. If not, you can see where you went wrong and correct your mistake. So we've talked about positive and negative slope. Now the two types of slope we want to talk about are the last two, are zero slope or undefined slope. The green line on the graph indicates zero slope. Notice it's a completely horizontal line and it has no rate of change. There is no steepness to this line. Imagine a really flat road. Many of our roads in Indiana are flat. They have zero slope. The other type of slope is undefined. And any time you have a vertical line, the black line on the graph, that type of slope is undefined. It's vertical. So remember, zero slope is a horizontal line. A line that's undefined in their slope is vertical. Let's look at a couple more examples. So find the slope of the line that passes through the two given points and then graph the line. So first we want to use our slope formula. Remember it's y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. If I label the ordered pairs x1, y1, x2, y2. So on top we have 4 minus 4. And on bottom we have 2 minus negative 3. 4 minus 4 is 0. 2 minus a negative 3, if we add the opposite, is 5. We know that 0 over any number is just 0. So the slope of the line that goes through these two ordered pairs is 0. So now let's think, what should this line look like when we graph it? Well, if it has 0 slope, it should be a horizontal line. Let's plot the points and make sure. First, we need to plot negative 3, 4 and positive 2, 4. And now if we draw the line, 
that goes through those two ordered pairs, you will see that it is a horizontal line, and horizontal lines have zero slope. Let's do another example. If you'd like to pause the video here, try this one on your own. Find the slope of the line that passes through the two points. So we're going to use the formula, and then we're going to graph the line. So we have x1, y1, x2, y2. And remember the formula is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So for our slope, we have 0 minus 3 over 1 minus 1. 0 minus 3 is negative 3, and 1 minus 1 is 0. And we should know by now that any time you try to divide by 0, it's undefined. We cannot divide by 0. So any time you're doing the slope formula and you get a 0 in the denominator, the slope is undefined, and we need to write that. You need to make sure you're writing undefined. Writing negative 3 over 0 is not enough on slopes of lines that are undefined. So let's go back a couple slides and just look at the picture again. An undefined slope is a vertical line. So when we graph these ordered pairs, we should get a vertical line. So first we're graphing 1, 3. So write 1 and up 3. And we're graphing 1, 0. That's right on the x-axis. So if I draw the line that connects these two points, you do in fact see that we get a vertical line, and vertical lines have slopes that are undefined. So are you able to find the slope of a line given a graph? Can we count rise over run? Do you understand which slopes are positive and negative? Also, can you use the slope formula? to find the slope of a line. Remember, it's y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And are you able to use the slope to describe a constant rate of change? We talked about that in the fourth and twelfth slides where we dealt with types of slopes. So we have positive, negative, zero, and undefined. And we can also compare slopes based on their steepness. In class, we'll work on the first worksheet from 8.6.